Yeah, that's a lot of crows. Anyway, welcome back to Reflex Red TV, guys. I know it's been a while. We haven't made any videos. Life has been uh, kind of getting in the way of doing the things we love. Got to make money, got to pay the bills. You know how it goes. Anyway, I got a little spare time. And uh, over the holidays, I got uh, a whole bunch of meat. Filled my freezer up. It's awesome. I'll tell you more about that later. And I also got a new grill set, you know, like the cleaning brush, the spatula, the tongs, all the crap you need to grill. And I realized that I don't really have a great grill. I have an old charcoal grill, which I've shown you all in a previous video. And <clears throat> I have this old gas grill, as you can see right there, that uh, has been out of commission for a long time. So whenever I say out of commission, I mean that like, the internal tubes were busted. The uh, igniters and the jets and uh, everything that is required for that little grill to actually function as a... Oh my God. If I didn't live in the city, all of them would be dead. Anyway, everything that's required for that grill to function pretty much died. I think the thing's like 15 years old. My dad gave it to me a long time ago. It used to work great. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to refurb that thing. Like, and I mean refurb top to bottom. I'm going to scrape the whole thing. I'm going to sand it. I'm going to paint it. Maybe even make a new wooden handle for the front of it. Hopefully if everything goes right, it should look pretty badass when I'm done with it. Never done anything like this before. I've never tried to paint stainless steel or uh, <laughs> obviously refurb a grill at all, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's got to be cheaper than going out and spending $600 on a new one, right? Now I know some of you are like $600, that's crazy. But I've been pricing them and they're freaking expensive. If you want one that's gonna last a, good, a long time, they're gonna be freaking $600. Four to 600, maybe even more. We're not even gonna get into the green egg thing, okay? Those are super expensive. This particular grill was made by Duquesne and it's a company that is out of business now, but whenever they were making grills, they made really great grills. And as you can see, I mean, it still has stood the test of time. Like the exterior doesn't look too bad. It looks like it's relatively serviceable. Personally, I want it to be a different color, right? Like, if I'm going to do this, why not make it the color that I want it? So anyway, I've already started kind of disassembling it and trying to figure out trying to figure out what uh, needs to be replaced on the interior. So I've already ordered some of the parts. I'm waiting for those to get here. I've got some of the parts here, but I figured while I'm taking it all apart and everything, why not make a video about it and why not show you guys... I don't know, a little something different. I know uh, you, most of you are probably here for hunting videos, but you know, life isn't just always hunting and fishing for me. Um, you know, sometimes I do fun projects like mess with refinishing a grill and going down an avenue I've never been before. So yeah, I don't know if you're not, not interested, which I don't know why you would have clicked on this video if you're not interested, but uh, yeah, there's plenty of hunting videos to check out right below this video in the hunting section. There's a lot of crows over there. And we do have more hunting and fishing content coming up soon. But today, this is the video we got. So, enough for me. Let's go look at the grill and I'll show you what I've already got going. All right, here she is in all her glory. Duquesne stainless. You can see the uh, little heat indicator there. Seen better days. Well, let's open her up. Try and get the shadows out of the way here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this thing has grilled a lot of stuff. So these are the tubes I was trying to tell you about. You can see how they're like completely busted open, completely destroyed. And I think that just happens with age as these propane uh, tubes just heat up and cool down. They eventually just explode like that. So all three of them are like that. We've got the heat shield down here that is completely rusted out. Well, for the most part rusted out. I'll probably replace that. I found those online. Yeah, so the cool thing is, is that you can pretty much find parts for these Duquesne grills anywhere on the internet. You know, if you're like me and you want to keep the one you have and not buy into a new one, you can find the parts to replace anything on this thing. Okay, so now let's look at the jets. Okay, these are the things that uh, spark the uh, propane coming out of those tubes. And they're also the uh, um, valves that actually supply the propane to the tubes. All right, so you can see those down there. And this thing I already, you know, 
I already uh, took that apart, took liberties with that. You gotta unscrew these, right? So there's two screws right here and two on the other side. And you've gotta undo this panel in order to get the uh, gas tubes out. <clears throat> here are the grease drip shields that fit over the tubes, the old ones. You can see these things are just roached, they're toast. That's the little motor. There's actually a rotisserie rod that runs right through here and you can put rotisserie chickens on it. And there's like a heating element back there. I haven't looked at the heating element to see if it still works. I'm assuming it doesn't. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take everything apart. I'm taking the lid off. I'm gonna take the handle off. I'm gonna take this off, the, thermo the thermostat, the logo. I'm gonna take the little side shelf off. <clears throat> we're gonna take, we're gonna look at the uh, side burner here um, after we get rid of these things. We should probably just move those and I'll... So it's got this little side burner. I don't think this thing works. I'm gonna try and take it apart and clean it up as much as I can. Anyway, all of this is, all of the uh, stainless steel in this is gonna get uh, sanded. Well, we'll start with degreasing. Well, first we'll start with disassembly. Then we'll start with degreasing. <laughs> and then we'll sand the whole thing down and then uh we'll use a self-etching primer which is just spray paint that self etches and like bonds with the stainless steel because if you just try and spray paint directly on stainless steel it'll just flake off it won't stick so we'll do the self-etching primer once that dries we'll uh look at it see if it needs to be sanded if it does then uh we'll do a wet sand with like a 400 to 800 grit sandpaper get it nice and smooth to finish it all off we're gonna paint it big green egg green oh yeah it's gonna look sweet and then of course i'll repaint all the knobs and i'm gonna repaint this i'm gonna cut paint the duquesne logo black and all the handles these little handle connector deals right here, those will be black. I wanna try and replace this with a wooden dowel, but I don't know if it actually comes out of there. It looks like it might be riveted in. Yeah, it looks like those are rivets. So we may just have to paint the whole thing black and call it a day. I don't think those are gonna come out very easy, but anyway, stick with me here and uh, we'll get started. All right, to get started, I'm taking off the little side tray, tray there, the little like, table where you would put like a pot or whatever your working surface essentially uh, looks like that's gonna come off with an 11 millimeter so let's get started super simple just four little bolts holding that thing up now, the thing to remember when doing a project like this, take all of your little nuts and bolts and everything and put each time you take something off, put them in a Ziploc bag and label it. So you know exactly what it goes back to whenever you're putting this thing back together. Side shelf. Okay, next I'm gonna take off the uh, little side burner, the little warmer on the left-hand side of the grill. Um, this has got some like hoses going to it that feed propane and um, what looks like an electrical cable for the striker <clears throat> to light the flame. So I've already got the striker unplugged. I'm going to take you under there and show you what it looks like. The uh, tools that I'm going to use are going to be the 11 millimeter again to get the uh, four bolts off for the tray. And then I'm going to use just a regular little old crescent wrench here to... Uh, undo the uh, gas line essentially that goes to the tray. And then once I do that and take the four bolts off, the whole thing should just come right off. Okay, so here's underneath the uh, little side burner. You can get, kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at. So this is the electrical cable and that plugs right up into that. And then you've got this gas tube right here where I'm gonna use the crescent wrench and loosen that up and take that off. Actually, you know what? Oh, nice. Look at that. I don't even need to use that. That thing just comes right, right off, maybe? Yes. That was awesome. No tools needed. So now we've got both of these unhooked. Now we just got to undo these four bolts. Same as on the other side. 
and this whole trail just come right off. Sweet. Side burner. A little worse for wear, a little dirty, but I think a little TLC would be good to go. A little rubber valve looks pretty good in good shape. I think this thing is completely still usable. Okay, again, don't forget to bag and label your nuts and bolts. Okay, next up, we're taking the whole lid off of it, right? The whole like lid that comes down that keeps all the heat in and all that stuff. We're taking that off and basically it looks like it's just held on by two bolts on either side um, screwed in with an allen wrench so i went ahead and uh, found an allen wrench that looks to be the right size this is a 3 16 and i'll take you over here and i'll show you how these bolts fit in it doesn't look like there's any nuts um actually like uh, on the back side right they're just screwed in which seems a little janky to me so whenever i put it back together i'll probably take the bolt up to uh Home Depot and find a, uh, a nut in a washer that fit on the back side of it to uh, just kind of keep it secure. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so there's the nut right there. And this is the only thing that's keeping that nut on there. And then this side it actually looks like it's completely gone. So I may have to replace that. It looks like it may have like burned off or broken off or something. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's in good shape. Um, so let's take this lid off. There's one. And there's two. Oh crap. So you definitely don't want to lose these because they look very specialized. I don't think you're going to be able to like just replace them super easy. I don't know if it's focusing on that, but you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. No washers, no nothing. Just those two strange little bolts. Okay. Bag, Ziploc, label. Okay, with those two bolts taken off, I think the whole lid should just like slide right off. Let's see if my theory is correct. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pick you guys up and we're gonna go look at it. I think that's pretty much everything I'm gonna take off of this. I think that I can degrease sand. Hey, hey helicopter, yeah, thanks. Okay, <clears throat> with the exception of that little front panel, let me get you guys adjusted here. With the exception of that little front panel that has the uh, knobs on it, um, I think that's everything I'm gonna take off for now. I'm gonna leave that panel with the knobs on it on there until I get the uh, little burner jet thingies that I was telling you all about because I wanna know how to put those back on whenever I take them off. And to get that front panel off, you've gotta take all those off there. So what I don't wanna, what I don't want to happen is to take them off now, have the burner show or the the valves show up in like a week and then i forgot how the hell they went on there so i'm gonna leave that intact for now and what we'll do is um we'll work on degreasing and sanding and painting the rest of the parts that you just saw me take off and then we'll make our way over to the main body and the main housing of the actual grill itself okay you know what i did miss uh one part on the back it looks like it's a some sort of heat cover for the actual rotisserie heating element that uh sits on the inside so you have like this heating rotisserie element right here and i'm going to take off this cover right here it's just four screws um really simple let me get my shadow out of the way just four screws one two three four we'll take those off and then of course i'm gonna have to like shot back the interior out um get a wire brush hit it with some degreaser get the whole thing cleaned up i think i'm gonna leave this for now and let's go look at the pieces we pulled off already let's start degreasing those and like see what they actually look like i don't know i guess we'll just do like a little test and see how it goes all right stick with me so what i want to do is i want to finish disassembling the lid okay you guys just saw me take that off i want to pull the thermostat off <clears throat> and i want to pull the uh 
the logo, the Duquesne logo off there. The Duquesne logo is going to be a little bit tricky. It looks like it's just riveted on with like some uh, pressure back plates. I don't, I don't really know the technical term for them. So we may have to like just basically pry those off there. Hopefully we don't break it. Um, the thermostat on the front looks to be just a couple of nuts uh, that are holding that on there. And uh, we'll figure out what size those are in just a second. And then the front handle is just some Phillips head screwdriver. Yeah. It looks like the thermostat is held on there by uh, an 11 30 seconds um, nut. So just to let you know, 11 30 seconds, that's what we're going to use. <clears throat> okay, so the nut looks like it's rusted on there. And I think it's just spinning the screw that's holding it on there. From what I can tell anyway. So I'm going to hit it with a little uh, PB blast, see if we can loosen it up. For those of you that don't know what PB Blast is, this stuff basically like will break free any rusted screw, bolt, nut, whatever you got. Um, you just spray it on there, let it sit for a minute or two, come back to it, and it should just unscrew right off. Okay, we're gonna try a different tactic. Of course we knew this wasn't gonna be easy. As easy as pulling all that other stuff off was, of course there's gonna be something that's not easy. Two pairs of needle nose pliers. We're gonna grab onto the screw real gently, and then we're gonna try and break that nut free. One down, one to go. Okay, that was uh, much easier than I anticipated. So, if you look at this, this is the logo on the, that goes on the front and it has these little like uh, retaining clips that just fit over those studs like that. So all I did was get a flathead screwdriver, <clears throat> pry them up and uh, then a pair of needle nose pliers and just pulled it out. Cool thing is this is like cast metal. So this ought to paint up really nicely. These I think we can just find at a, like a Lowe's or maybe even order, off, order them off Amazon or something. Still gonna keep them so we have them for reference. Bag your parts. The last little part that we need to take off of the, uh, the hood is gonna be the handle. And that's just four Phillips head screwdrivers, four Phillips head screwdrivers, four Phillips head screws. I'll show you real quick. So two there and two over there. Should be relatively straightforward. Let's see how it goes. Should be a little easier than that thermostat. Huh. Interesting. There's like a little filler cap that goes inside the handle. Easy peasy. There's the handle. Don't forget, bag your parts. Okay. So that is the lid completely disassembled. I'll show you what it looks like. All right. So. Thermostat's gone, front logo's off, handle screws are gone. Ugh. There she is in all her glory. She's gonna look a lot better when I'm done with her. Next step, let's degrease some shit. So the way that I'm gonna start is with a cup of water and some paper towels. I bought shop rags right because you don't want to use all your paper towels for this plus these are thicker and more heavy duty i'm going to wipe down all the dust and dirt and grime that's on it first and then we'll hit it with degreaser and get all the grease off we're going to start with something small so i'm going to start with a uh, little side table and just see how it goes better to start small and see how it goes than try and do the giant lid before you get to the small stuff right okay we all agree on that right Dang, she dirty. Look at that. All right, so that looks like it's most of the dust and dirt. Let's hit it with the degreaser. So for degreaser, I uh, did a little search on the internet and found that this is Zep 
fast 505 degreaser. Seems to be a pretty good like all around degreaser. And it says workspaces and grills for grills. See, I'm smart. So I also got a little wire brush, a little steel wire brush to uh, hit any tough spots that the grease won't come off of if there's like some caked on stuff. So it looks like there's a little bit on the sides right here that I'm gonna hit with this. All right, so I think that's pretty, pretty well degreased. It's a lot shinier than it was before. Now, don't forget, we're gonna be hitting this with sandpaper. So if you don't get everything off and it's not perfect, I think the sandpaper will get whatever you missed. We have to sand it before we can uh, spray the uh, self-etching primer. I'm gonna set this to the side and then we'll do the uh, little burner, the little warmer tray. Okay, so next up is the little warming tray. You can see this thing is really dirty. I think I'm gonna take it over there to the hose and hose it out first. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, wipe it down with some water and then we'll hit it with the degreaser. I'll be right back. Okay, that's looking a lot better. You can see not nearly as much grime in there. So I'm gonna wipe this down with some paper towels and some water and then we'll degrease it. All right, so I just noticed something on that little burner right there that you can actually take the lid off. So I'm gonna take the lid off because I think that whenever I go to sand it and paint it and everything, I'll get a much better result if that thing is off of there. That comes off with another 3 16 Allen wrench. Easy peasy. Two little, uh, it looks like you can, these are actually knurled. You could probably like take them off with your hands, but these were kind of tied in there. So the Allen wrench helped. I'm also gonna take the handle off because that's just two Phillips head screws and that'll allow me to really get a nice finish on this when it's time to paint. All right, there we go. Don't forget, bag your parts. What? <laughs> okay, so the burner just completely, I just completely disassembled the burner from the housing. And basically, it was just two screws with that, holding it down, holding it onto the housing. That is super convenient, because now I don't have to paint this part, and I can just paint that housing part. That is awesome. Don't forget, bag your, okay, let's get back to cleaning and degreasing. All nice and shiny. Almost looks brand new. Don't forget the lid. Oh yeah. Nice and shiny. The wire brush really knocked a lot of the rust off, which was really nice. This is gonna paint up really well. Okay, we got the little side shelf done, all cleaned up, degreased, ready to go. We got the side burner, all cleaned up, degreased, ready to go. Now, we're gonna tackle the lid, the big daddy. This thing, it's just big. It's just got more surface area, right? It shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's a little dirty. We're gonna wipe it all down, get it all cleaned up, hit it with the wire brush, get the rust off of it, and it should shine up like a new penny. All right, let's hit it with the degreaser. So I'm pretty sure that anything that won't come off with the wire brush will come off with the sandpaper whenever we hit it with that. <sighs> okay guys, so I'm gonna level with you. I, <laughs> I spared you about an hour of scrubbing on the lid and it was totally worth it. This thing, I think I scraped off about 15 years of soot off the interior. Check the, there's dog barking. Anyway, check out how this came out. <laughs> it is freaking amazing. I thought it was black paint on the inside. 
It wasn't black paint, it was freaking soot. Check this out. All right, so how crazy does that look? If you don't remember what it looked like before, I'm gonna post up a picture or a screen grab, a screen grab of it right here. Okay, so one more look. Dang, so shiny. So that is with the Zep degreaser and a trusty wire brush. Insane, insane how clean it looks. It's not perfect and I'm not gonna paint the inside of it, but I mean, compared to where it was, here, let's go look at the interior of the other one, of the main body. That's what it used to look like. Yuck, how am I gonna clean that? It's gonna be insane. Okay, I think we're at a stopping point for right now. The next steps will be to sand and paint these components. And then we'll have to tackle the big boy back there. Really sorry about the barking dog. All right.